The second thing, uh, first thing was Christ, and the second relationship is a relationship with yourself. And I know that sounds kind of funny, but I want you to look at this through two viewpoints. The first one is simply just taking care of your spirit. Um, it's so important in our relationship with ourselves. Uh, when I think of taking care of our spirit, I think of just the simple practices of daily devotions. Um, so many people go through life and they never ever get to the point because they're scared of what it takes to do devotions. They think that it has to be like an hour sitting there like humming and chanting or something like that. And you know, like, oh, mm, speak to me, Lord. And you know, it's like, it's not like that. You know, one of the most liberating things for me when I was younger, um, and it's grown since then, because I found out something that was so powerful. Um, a guy who's a pastor out in Winston-Salem now, Mike Rakes, he said, it don't, you don't have to do devotions for an hour every day. You don't even have to do it for a half hour every day. I'll take five minutes a day. Start somewhere. And he goes, you know what? Don't even read a chapter of the Bible. Just open it up somewhere in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are really simple to read. So just open it up anywhere and just read subtitle to subtitle. And that's what I started doing. That's how I started my walk with God um, in a deeper and more mature way. Was I would read one little passage of scripture, subtitle to subtitle, and then I would think about it all day long. Now, sometimes I still do that. And other times I read a chapter or two. But this is how we take care of our spirit. And it's the way that we can make sure that we're healthy on the inside. And I promise you guys, a lot of, I feel like a lot of you guys feel like you're fighting against the wind and you can never land a solid punch. The reason for that is because you need to be centered in Christ. When you're centered in Christ, he's going to let you know where to go. The, the scriptures talk about that he is a lamp to guide our feet and a light for our path. It means that he's going to light up. I always say this, that he doesn't give us a spotlight to look at what's at the end of the road, but he gives us a lamp for what's right in front of us. And so if you feel like that this morning... If you feel like you're fighting against the wind and you're not landing any solid punches and you're trying and this isn't working out, that's not working out, and you don't feel peace and you don't feel this stuff, start taking care of your spirit. And let God be that lamp that guides your feet. Let him be a light for your path. The second part of that um, is your view of yourself. Um, we're talking about the relationship with Christ, the relationship with self and, and self. It's, it's the way that we take care of ourselves, but also the way that we view ourselves one of my favorite scriptures in, in all of the Bible is um, in the book of Psalms. It says, you made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous and how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter, utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, oh God. They are innumerable. This means a lot to me and to any other parents. And, um, you know, I, I see some over here with the kids on the side. I, I, it's amazing to me when I think about my four-year-old, my three-year-old, my one-year-old, and my little one that we don't know if it's a boy or a girl, but we found out on Friday. Um, thank you. I'll tell you guys next week, I promise. Um, I think about that. I think about the fact that my wife um, is building the baby, you know? And I think about the fact that God knows all of my baby's days. He knows that little boy or girl. Well, I'll tell you on Friday, Sunday, Sunday, I'll tell you Sunday. Maybe I'll post it on the website under news and events. Um, but he knows everything about that little one. And so as we view ourselves... Try and view yourself through the scope of you are exactly who God made you to be. You look exactly the way God wanted you to look. You see, we've got to have a healthy relationship with ourself and a healthy view on ourself. And if we can have a healthy view on ourself, then it's going to lead to more um, things that God can show us. Um, and again, um, if you guys just forget everything I say, let's start with the main thing here. Is that a relationship with Christ is the foundation of life-giving relationships. So we've talked about the relationship, our relationship with Christ and our relationship with ourself. The third one is our relationship with our family. And you can see a natural progression here from Christ to yourself to your family. Um, if Christ is your foundation, it's going to flow into your personal life. It's going to flow and it's going to affect 
everybody around you. The word hope uh, is so ingrained in my spirit right now. Um, and, and what I feel like God is, is kind of showing me right now um, is this idea of if I've got a healthy relationship with Christ and then a healthy relationship and I'm taking care of my spirit and I've got a healthy view of myself, it's going to be a natural progression into my family and hope will spread with those around me. The people that are closest to me is my wife and my three kids and little number four. Um, my family is the most powerful impact that I'll have on this earth. And your family will be the most powerful impact that you have on earth. Uh, it's important for parents in this room to know um, that you know even scriptures talk about, and you could do so much. I could do so much. We could grow this church to 10,000 people. But man, if my kids don't know that I love them and I have done everything that I can to lead them in the way of Christ, then I haven't done my job. And you know what? There's still hope for those of you guys that feel like maybe you dropped the ball a little bit because you can still invest into them because family is going to be the most powerful um, impact that you make for uh, the sons and daughters, which all of us fit into that category, but specifically if there's teenagers in the room or people that are still under the roof of your parents' house, you can impact your parents. I learned so much from my kids. I'll never forget um, hearing Mike talk about when his son Britt finally decided to really sell out to God. And the look in his eyes was so powerful. And he said, what a big God we serve. You see, it's the family that will catch the things the closest. So we've got our relationship with Christ. We've got our relationship with ourself. We've got our relationship with our family. As those are solid, it begins to grow a little bit. And it can flow into the, um, the small group. The small group is something that we're going to uh, emphasize greatly here at Hope Church. Um, we're going to be running our, our small groups on semester systems, kind of like schools do. Um, we're going to basically be running them for about three months at a time, two to three months at a time. So you can start and you can end at a certain time. Then we'll take a break. Everybody will not go to small groups, and then we'll kick it back up again. It's going to be something where it's a great place just for us to simply meet people. We're not asking you to form like insanely deep relationships, but it's nice to have some friends. And that's what the small groups can do. Proverbs 27, 17 says something very powerful. It says, as iron sharpens iron, a friend sharpens a friend. And that's what's going to happen at the small groups. So a relationship with Christ is the most important thing that we could ever do. And it builds from there. Because he's the foundation of life-giving relationships. So it goes from Christ to ourselves, to our family, flows into the small groups of the church, and we begin to branch out and find accountability in small groups. And then beyond that, it goes into the local church, and that's what you have here today. Um, every week that we meet here, it feels more like church. But to me, that's just something that I learned to say, because we are the church. And hope is the church in the community. You are the church in the community. But when we come here together, it's a celebration. That's why if you haven't caught it quite yet, I tend to, my feet don't stay still when I worship because I'm worshiping a God that is so powerful. I love coming together. I think that is one of the most powerful of two things that we do to get together when we come together on a weekly basis. We celebrate an amazing God. And there will be celebration every week here at Hope. Beyond that, it's the ability to hear the word from somebody that hopefully you trust, that we've heard from God, and we're going to try and do our best to give you what God is telling us for this church and this community.